Hey, welcome to the Birdcraft Technology. Today, we're gonna to be talking about fixing a broke helicopter on the top of a sky rise in Atlanta. But we're also gonna explore what it looks like to be an aircraft mechanic in the culture and what it looks like for an aircraft to be broke somewhere else and what it takes to get out there and fix it. Let's face it, it is ideal to maintain aircraft in the hangar. It is our workplace. In the hangar, we have our toolboxes that we're extremely familiar with, that we've built that toolbox to maintain the equipment that's in the hangar. Now guys, anytime I talk about equipment, I'm talking about the aircraft, right? The, the aircraft is a piece of equipment. Now, you might be maintaining a jet, you might be maintaining a helicopter, you might be maintaining military equipment, uh, an Apache or a Huey or, you know, something, a Black Hawk or something of that nature. It's equipment. It's equipment, it's heavy equipment. Maybe it's a light helicopter, you know? It's still heavy equipment, 1,500 pounds, you know? So, going back to your toolbox, you're not gonna have the same tools in your toolbox to work on a, let's say, Robinson helicopter as you're gonna have to work on a Gulfstream, right? Not only that, but in your hangar, you're gonna have a ton of support equipment. Lifts, right, to raise you up to a horizontal stabilizer. Now, I'm gonna tell you, you might need a 40 or 50 foot lift, right? Or a genie or something like that when you're working on a G5. Again, you don't need that for a Robinson helicopter. You need a 10 foot ladder, maybe a stand. So you're not even gonna have the same support equipment in the hangar, right? Depending on what equipment you're working on, you're gonna have different support equipment. Also special tools. Now special tools is what you're gonna get from the manufacturer to work on that aircraft, right? and to perform certain inspections. You know, all types of little weird devices and test boxes that have custom purposes to fit that specific equipment. All that stuff is gonna be in the hangar. Now, when an aircraft breaks somewhere else, now you're on the phone with the pilots or with your maintenance director and you're getting this discrepancy, you're writing this discrepancy down, you're trying to ask as many questions as possible, but at the end of the day, you as a mechanic, the maintainer, you're trying to figure out what tools, what resources do I need to dispatch from this hangar to go out there to the field. I might be getting on an airplane, being flying to, flying to another state, to another location. I have to figure out what tools I need to fix this aircraft, to get it back home. And that's not always easy. I'll tell you, um, when I went to, to when I went across the pond, right, uh, to another country, I loaded up my Pelican toolbox. I have a custom Pelican toolbox that I made, and I tried to get on a Delta airline with it. Negative. Apparently, you couldn't get. I couldn't take a bag that was over 75 pounds. I think when I first put my bag on the my Pelican toolbox on a scale that weighed about 115 pounds. I had to have the person that dropped me off circle back around and I had to choose, okay, what tools can I go without, right? And I had to put them back in the car and go back to the scale and get it down to 75 pounds. So if your bag is over 50 pounds, you'll have to pay more. But at some point, there's no amount that you could pay to have that, that super heavy case on, on the airplane because they, they perceive it as a liability. So there's things that you gotta take into account and you'll, you'll gain some experience. Sometimes I know I know a third party, Duncan Aviation, they'll ship their tools over there beforehand, right? Or you could correspond with some people locally and see if you could get some type of help, see if you could get another aircraft mechanic in that or, or another operation that's willing to loan you your tools or whatever equipment you may need to get the job done. These are all things you gotta take into account. Now, again, I'm gonna show you me going out here to the top of the W, which is a hotel here in Atlanta, Skyrise, all the cool footage, you know, and you're gonna get to see some really cool things. But what I want you guys to draw out of this is, is that you're gonna have to take time and energy, and you're gonna have to really use your brain to figure out what you are going to need to go fix that aircraft. I'm gonna use a little script here to help me out. Here I was dispatched downtown Atlanta, which is actually only about 25 minutes from my location here at Fulton County Airport, FTY. Um, 
I made a Pelican toolbox, right? It's a one eighth inch ply board and I glued uh, workout pads to it, right? Now you can buy foam in the industry that they use to cut out your tools and whatnot. Um, I went a different route. Uh, things can get pricey. I layered those pads, I glued them together, I carved them out with a hot knife, and then I went back in there with red acrylic paint and I painted it nice and so when you remove a tool, there's a red print where that tool goes. So that's how I made my Pelican toolbox. I made handles for it and again, that those each, each layer fits in that Pelican toolbox perfect. Um, the three things that you wanna do to better prepare for this experience when it happens are, number one, you wanna visualize the job when you're in the hangar to help you prep for the job, okay? Number two is you wanna get with a peer or a teammate or another mechanic and you wanna talk it through with them and you wanna consult and they're gonna have some things to add you guys. So you wanna use a teammate. You don't wanna go at this all by yourself if you don't have to, all right? Number three is you wanna be very calculated with what tools you take because again you're going to have limitations and you don't want to carry a hundred pound bag even if you're not limited by other sources or whatever you don't want to carry a t every tool you have in your toolbox right so you want to be very calculated with what tools you choose all right so i hope this video brought to you some value helped you kind of visualize what this may look like in the future or if you've done it before in the past maybe there's a point here that you haven't considered thank you as always for visiting the birdcraft technology and continue to pursue excellence